code interfaces can work in both directions. You can have a body of code use an interface to refer to code near the top of the call chain. You can have code at the top of the code tree use an interface to reach code further down. Standardizing on well-defined interfaces make code paths potentially bidirectional. That is not to say you want code to work along bidirectional paths. You simply gain the option. An interface for the application has been established. It works the way we expect. Lest anyone think this optimizes performance, I will state that I gave no consideration to performance during this process. C++ compilers have advanced enough that I focus more on the structure and organization rather than the performance impact. You can always optimize later. That frees you to liberally modify the code to suit purposes of readability. Number one is making the code more manageable and easier to understand. That means you have a higher chance of sustaining and evolving the program well into the future. The next level down from the application involves the window. And this is as good a time as any to reorganize the window into its own interface and implementation. As was done for the application, the detailed execution statements will remain unchanged. What will change is the location of the code, the functions for establishing a new window, and they will be organized into a new namespace. The activate function will remain part of the application. The code inside the activate function will be moved to a new function in the namespace for the window. That function will also be called create. So you're creating the application and then you're creating the window. So the function names are the same. What they do depends on their context. Having the code that was previously in the activate function move to its own module simplifies the definition of the application module and gives more space in terms of code definition to the main window. Along the way, the build tools will be used to verify that headers and functions are properly specified. At this early stage, no need exists to refer to the application from the Windows module. Later, a case will arise for a bidirectional link between the application and the window. And if we look at the bin directory, we have an old copy of the GUI application that we will update later on. For now, let's send our updated source code to the build server and let's build it. So we do reset space ampersand. That's going to clear the screen and then run the command that follows the double ampersand, in this case, our build script, which runs the make file and the make file tries to compile the code and a number of errors were presented. These are usage errors that we can correct as follows. First, we need to make sure that we have the proper include files that we are referring to, the right names, symbolic names, and that our variables and functions have the correct names that's expected by different parts of the program. Once the Windows module is successfully recognized by the compiler, we can inspect it to see if it still functions the way 
we last observed. This will also be an opportunity to adjust our download script. Just as we used rsync for sending the code up to the build server, we can use rsync to bring down program files and exclude items in the build that we do not want. And that's going to be vitally important later on. Suffice it to say, the dependencies that were jointly shared between the application and the window when they existed in one spot can now um, be delineated with greater precision. So now that the application has built successfully, we have an updated version of the news reader executable. Let's bring that executable down, but before we do so, let's update our script. This is one good insight to note. There are cases when you're in the course of development and you see an opportunity to improve something and you might make the excuse that there's not enough time to do that. Usually there is time to do it. You just have to know the extent of the change that you're going to make and make sure you can fit it in. And if it does improve productivity, you only gain when it comes to revisions and iterations and the depth to which you can extract more value in the process. So, we now have our updated script to bring down the executable. It's, um, so far it seems to be working quite well. The dates and times seem to correspond to the time frames when we ran it. Our script for running the program, however, still has a copy of the file that it was copied from, which was the send code to VM script. So now we need to edit the contents so that it properly refers to the executable that we want to run. Again, the objective here is to have the ability to do all of our processes out of the project directory. And with these modifications, we have accomplished that. The program runs the way we last observed. Everything's in place. Now it's a matter of refining this GUI application.